Good morning, folks. George Adventure here. Uh, apologize for the sniffles, ragweeds. Ragweed is tearing me up. I was at the beach. Uh, well, I was at Panama City for about a day and a half, and I'm, this is what my story's about. So, hope everybody's having a great day. It's 58 degrees this morning when I left home at dark. Actually, I had to run the heat a little bit. But so, my wife and I, <clears throat> Miss Linda, Miss Georgia, we uh, we left early, early Friday morning. Towed the camper to Panama City. Was meeting my father-in-law down there uh, at a campsite, and the purpose of going to Panama City was uh, spend a little time with my daddy-in-law. But he uh, he's got a grandson that's. 30-ish in his early 30s uh, he's a Navy diver and they have never met so it was arranged by some other people uh, for him to meet his grandson and he's got grandkids but he's never met this this grandson so uh, that was the purpose of going to Panama City I don't normally go to Panama City when I go to Florida. I usually go to Indian Pass. Panama City is a little crowded for me. But, uh, so we, you know, we went to the campsite and everything, and then we we met. And it was it was pretty cool to watch, you know. Uh, his grandson, I don't know him well at all. I just met him myself, but he's, he's very... Uh, humble it seems like very soft spoken he's a navy diver and the funny thing is is my you know my my dad-in-law is 82 years old and has never met his grandson this grandson uh so you know he uh you know my dad-in-law he was a marine and he, he's a lot like my daddy. He, he's in that generation that, you know, uh, they just, you know, have a lot of character. They 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 do the right things. He, he grew up, <clears throat> my dad-in-law, he grew up in the North, uh, North Carolina mountains, Mars Hill area. He, he grew up on a farm. Um, they were tobacco farmers. I think there were nine of them and they, they lived in this, you know, just this old homestead, home place, and grew tobacco, lived, you know, lived that life. And he, he's, you know, when you meet him, you wouldn't think he was tough, you know. He's, he's, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of, he's smaller. He's maybe five foot. He's probably five foot eight. Uh, but he, he's one of the nicest people that I've ever met. My wife's dad, he's a good man. I think a lot of him, uh, of all the, you know, of all the people in her family, he's 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 the best one beside her. He's the best one. Uh, he's just a humble man, uh, but it, it's the generation that, that uh, as far as I'm concerned, built this country, made this country what it used to be. It's not that way now. Uh, you know, my generation's done pretty good. And we've, you know, we've kind of blundered some things, but he, he was, he, him and my dad's from that great generation. And, that, and that's, you know, that's just my opinion, but they worked hard. They did what was right. You know, they put country first, put their family first, uh, took care of their families, just did what they had to do to survive. Uh, and they don't make them anymore. He's 82 years old. He's healthy. He, he drives a camper. He's got a Class C camper, and he drives it around. He was a trucker all of his life. Um, but just a humble, humble man, a simple man. Just like that Leonard Skinner song, Simple Man. My mother always told me to be a simple man. So when I hear that song, it kind of tears me up. Uh, that's kind of my my mama's song to me uh, but he's a simple man uh, didn't have a whole lot growing up 
didn't have much. You know, they lived a farm life. My, my daddy went through the depression and he didn't have much. They were poor. And when I say poor, he didn't have shoes. And my daddy-in-law's name is Jerry. And uh, so he just buried two of his sisters. But uh, so he met, he met, he met Jeremy, which is his grandson. And he stationed, actually stationed in Panama City. That's why we went down there. So, um, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was cool. There was a lot of smiling going on and hugging and stuff. But we spent, you know, we spent Friday afternoon and spent a good bit of the day Saturday with him. And uh, so, you know, he, uh, it was, it was pretty cool. But, you know, I, I, I was sitting there, we were sitting in his camper and this is just random, but it, we were sitting in his camper and he pulls out a, a medium stockman, case stockman, pulls it out. And it looked like stag. I was looking at it. He had him an apple. He, he started cutting that apple up and eating it, you know. And I looked over at my wife, kind of smiled, you know. But that's that old school stuff, man. You know, pulls out that case knife and that's what he carries. And he, uh, you know, he just starts cutting his apple up. You know, he folded it up. He didn't even wipe it off. He just folded it up and put it put it back in his pocket. You know, he's a real neat. You know, he dresses. You know, he he, he you know he don't dress fancy, but when he you know he goes off, he he's everything's neat. He wears a hat. You know, ex marine. Uh, you know, been through a lot in his life. Uh, you know, and it makes me sad, you know, that that generation is is slowly coming to an end, you know. Uh, it's, it's, they're, you know, they're, they're dying off, unfortunately. Uh, my daddy will be 91 next month, and he's of that generation. And, you know, he, he was a Korean War veteran. Uh, you know, unfortunately, he's in an assisted living home. I hope we never have to put my dad in law in one of those. Which assisted living is not too bad. It's it's you know, you got your own room and all. Uh, you know, it's a lot better than a nursing home. But you know, these guys, the guys like that, the men like that, they they, they are men and, and they they built this to, as far as I'm concerned, they, they built this country. You know, like I said, my daddy served in the Korean War, and the, and the people before him that were in World War One, World War Two. You know, they were they were people that did what they had to do to take care of their families, take care of things, uh, and and loved this country, loved America, loved America. You know, and I, I see people now that just seem like they just hate this country and. and I'm not going to get on my soapbox, but, you know, it breaks my heart. Uh, I just don't understand it, you know, because I see, I see men like my daddy-in-law and my daddy and the ones before them, you know, the ones later that went to Vietnam, you know, I had a cousin, a couple cousins that went to Vietnam. I never fought in a war. I never served in the military. I regret it. I do regret it. Uh, you know, we serve in different. Everybody serves in a different way. But I've always been a I've always been a patriotic person. I've always loved my country. I die for my country right now. I'm 63 years old. Uh, if I had to, you know, I would go. I'd take up arms and go. Uh, and there's a lot of guys like me out there. But you know, I just, you know, and I'm not going to broad brush the younger generation because I meet some young guys that love this country. But it, it don't it don't seem to be as as is uh, it's not as plentiful as it was as far as people loving this country, and I see, I see the stuff that goes on, you know, uh, and I just cannot understand living in the greatest country uh, and not wanting this country to be great and wanting to do things that's going to destroy the country. I, I just cannot understand that philosophy. As hard as it's been built, as hard as it's the stuff that this country's been through, 
9-11, you know, made me think about that last week. Uh, but, you know, my dad-in-law, you know, he's, he's, he's getting to be that they're, the, they're a rare breed now because they're, they're dying. And, you know, when you see these got old timers like that, that have, that have, uh, uh, the morals they have, you know, they're not perfect, but they have the morals, uh, the integrity they have is just impeccable. They're just, you know, they do what's right. They're not perfect. They're sinners, but they do what's right. They just gonna do what's right. And, you know, it's just, uh, excuse me, but they're, they're just, they're just a cut above. They're just a cut above. I have a lot of respect. I have a lot of respect for my father-in-law and I know my wife loves him. You know, we, he followed us for a ways, and then he turned off on Highway 10 going towards South Carolina. And, of course, my wife tears up, you know. And she loves him. She she wants to take care of him. And, you know, I aggravate her a little bit about it. I said, quit, you know, I tell her, quit quit hovering over that man. You know, he's, he's, he's he can take care of himself. But I understand my wife wanting to do it. She loves him, and, and he's a good man, you know. But... It makes me sad that we're losing that generation. It's just a great generation, and I have fear. I fear for my country, man, because I don't know, you know. I just, I don't know. I don't know, you know. I don't know this younger generation, and I'm not knocking it because I know there's a lot of good guys out there, and I know there's some young guys on in our knife community that, that'll do right, but I don't know if there's as many, you know, it's like they're more, the younger generation's more for me, 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 you know. I just see, I just see things that really, really disturb me, I guess. But my daddy-in-law was a great man, you know, and he's, he's, he's done a lot of good for the country, done a lot of good for his family. You know, and I, like I said, I have a lot of respect for him. I appreciate him, and, and I know my wife loves him. Said he whipped out that case knife and cut that apple up yesterday. Uh, I was no, it was. Uh, I'm sorry, it was. It was Saturday. It was Saturday, not yesterday, but Saturday when he pulled his knife out. You know, he he got a little dog that travels with him. Uh, called him Pinto. Travels with him, and uh, so he he's got that camper. He likes to go camping, so. He's coming up here. He's coming up here uh, in November. Stay with us. He's going to park his camper next to my barn, and I'm going to run him some electricity out there. And I would like to get him on a video. Uh, and there's a there's a guy that there's a guy that is called Medcalf Mills that has a YouTube channel, and they're related. They're related to each other. They're family. So. Pretty good. It's a great channel, Metcalf Mills. You know, if you like farming stuff and old ways like that, Justin Metcalf, he uh, he's the one that does the channel, owns the channel. So, but they're related, and uh, but yeah, it's it's uh, you know it's it's a it's kind of bittersweet to see my dad in law. You know, and I still have my daddy, but. Anyway, that's that's the thing for today. You know, I I just kind of wanted to talk about him, and you know, just uh, you know, kind of honor him a little bit. He deserves it. You know, my wife's proud of him. What he does, he loves my wife. You know, he he uh, he looks after her too. But uh, anyway, so that's the video for today. So today, I'm carrying. I'm carrying my farmer knife, my Victor Knox farmer. Uh, Sodbuster 50 sent me this, and I appreciate him. Cause my other one's out in the out in the Dad Blame River. Carrying this mid folding hunter today. Snapped it right up. Pretty cool knife. I'm not crazy about the blade shape, to be honest with you. 
I, I would rather have this thing with a uh, spare point or a skinning type blade. Uh, but I like it. I like it. It's a neat knife. It's made out. It's got the it's got the red and black micarta on it. So I'm carrying this one. And of course, y'all know. You already know. Uh, chestnut bone soddy. Always gonna have a soddy on me, man. Got a little teener on it. So I just want to tell all the knife guys how much I appreciate you. Uh, enjoyed enjoyed uh, Big J in Boston yesterday. Uh, just a good... And I hadn't been home from Panama City long, so I watched it. But good show. Baxter Blades. Uh, but just a good group of guys, man. And, you know, y'all give me hope. The young guys, the young guys that's on the knife in the knife community, you give me hope, man. You give me hope for the country. You know, you really do. You give me hope, you know. Oh. Parker Jotter today, all stainless. All stainless. Got my Hank. So, yeah, great day. I hope God blesses all y'all today. And uh, anyway, y'all have a blessed day. Keep your blade sharp. Be careful out there. Be sharp. And watch out for yourself. Be safe. And uh, remember, keep your knife sharp. God bless you. Have a great day.